Is this weird? I mean, Green Path certainly isn't the most hated biome, but I don't think I know anyone who would say it's their favorite, right? Most people would agree it's delightfully meh. Fine music, fine but reused-ish art, fine difficulty considering it's the second area of the game, and this is how I felt too for a while. I mean, I do not like the Royal Waterways and would probably still say it's worse than Green Path. I don't know who thought it was a good idea to slap the hardest enemies in the entire game in a mid-game area. Go away, Primal Aspid, you aren't invited. Okay, real talk, do y'all actually think that Primal Aspids are more annoying than Fluke Fey? Really? Uh, okay, but Green Path. What does Green Path have? Well, it has 11 enemies, the Duranda and Du, Fool Eaters and Golkos, three types of Moskin, including a mini boss type enemy, the Squit and Obble, and two enemies that hide in the moss, the Moss Creep and Charger. It also has three boss fights, one of which is notoriously a big difficulty spike, and the other two are not. If you want to fully complete the game, there are around 15 or so things that you need to collect. The primary item to find is the dash, this area's major upgrade, which just defines the rest of the game. Gameplay before the dash can often feel kind of tedious, which kind of sucks, because even when speedrunning, you're realistically spending around 10 minutes to get this upgrade. Before you get the dash, you can find the hunter and get his journal, fight the Vengefly King and save Zote, maybe, or you can leave him to die. Your call. You can also find the stag station of the area and collect all four or grubs in the whole area. Once you get the dash though, you can get Baldur Shell and Thorns of Agony, both in small gauntlets. There's also a few more things you can do when you come back here with more abilities, but we'll get to that later. Anyways, now it's time to explain why all of this sucks. Problem number one item spread. Look at the map of items in this area. There's some cool stuff up here, some cool stuff down here, and that's it. The spread of the items is terrible. In the Forgotten Crossroads, every single room either has a hidden item or is connected to a room that does. In Green Path, well, let's say you're here. You'll probably be passing through this room at least once, but probably multiple times since it's part of the long horizontal hub. If you want to get to a room with content in it, well, going left reaches this Duranda and we can't exactly reach the wall over there yet, and going up, there's nothing for an entire room. If we go right a little further instead, we can find another long upwards room and yup, there's nothing again. Zero pickups in either of these massive upwards rooms. If we go rightward to the next room, there's, you guessed it, nothing. There's a neat Holoness seal that we can get with some interesting tech, but for the casual player, there's nothing here until much later in the game too. All right, there's two directions we can go from here. From here, we can go up another long vertical shaft, and this time there's actually still nothing. No pickups in this room, but if we continued upwards for one more room, we would be able to unlock nothing though. All right, there's two directions we can go from here. Going left brings us to a room that we've already seen. Surprise, surprise, nothing there. But what if we went right? This room is actually quite important since it's also the room that we see Hornet jump to earlier and we can't follow her back then. This is not only a later part of this biome, but it's also one that an NPC has shown us could be important. Entering it and exploring, we can find a crazy amount of nothing. Like, there's not even Geo Rocks in here. But, and yes, I'm continuing this all the way through until I can't anymore. Let's go into that room with Hornet. It's one of the first rooms in the area, and since we already saw that the later parts of this biome don't have anything, surely there must be absolutely nothing. Traveling rightward again, backtracking to the second room of the biome, we see a room with zero pickups. And then finally, entering the first room in the area, we have a wacky room with zero pickups. There are 14 rooms, all connected with each other, with zero zero pickups whatsoever. Not having pickups is honestly fine though, as long as there are some interesting challenges in those 14 rooms. See Queen's Garden, which doesn't have that many upgrades, but at least there's things to do. So let's see what we have. Ah yes, Toll Bent. Ah yes, Normal Bench. Ah yes, One Wanderer's Journal. We can't even cash it in yet, and it's literally just given for free in a breakable wall. Ah yes, Moss Knight Battle Room. So just to recap, one extremely minor collectible that will eventually give us as much money as a whopping 1x false knight, and a challenge room against an enemy that dies to full soul. Crossroads are an unfair comparison, so let's look at probably the most empty biome in the game, Fog Canyon. Let's do the same trace a path with no items thing, and the maximum we can do is four. When you have three and a half times more connected rooms without items, you've got a bit of a problem. Oh yeah, and before you ask, there's only a single room in Cliffs without a meaningful pickup, so it's not more barren. Okay, problem number two, the backtracking or the challenges, I kind of talk about both points. So just like with every other area in Hollow Knight, if you come back to Green Path with more upgrades, there's a few new items you can unlock. With the Claw, you can get this journal and this vessel fragment. With the Lantern, you can get this Mask Shard and fight a Dream Warrior. With Crystal Heart, 
Heart, you can get the Great Slash and the Seal if you're a casual. And with Ismus Tier, you can get the Shape of Vaughn. Four of these six pickups are also really far from a stag, so I hope you like Long Horizontal Room with Moss Chargers in it, because you're going to be seeing a lot of that. Oh yeah, and in case you didn't think it was realistic that a person would have to travel through a bunch of these empty rooms in a row, what the hell is this? The boss here is No Eyes, and No Eyes is the best Dream Warrior by far. I also disagree with this. What? What does No Eyes have going for it? It's so annoying to just chase it down. Like, it, it's just annoying. I think I can just leave it at that. The Vessel Fragment down here, by the way, is one of the goofiest pickups in the game. Usually non-relic items have some kind of challenge attached to them in order to pick them up, but this one is literally just backtrack to the room after Moss Charger again and climb up the wall you couldn't climb up before. Then it just sort of gives it to you for free. Going back to the left side, the Trail of Shio is probably the most engaging part of Green Path besides Hornet. It kind of sucks that it's just sort of a repeat of the Crystal Peaks challenge rooms, just with the slight difference of using Durandas instead of lasers. It's the same gist though, but honestly probably easier. If you were able to get Crystal Dash and complete the gauntlets over there, this was probably a bit easy for you, and considering you literally can't reach it without C-Dash, the it's a starter area excuse doesn't really hold up anymore. Lastly, there's Shape of Un, which is honestly pretty neat. If you remember the Lake of Un had acid, it's a nice way to reward you for paying attention. Not difficult, you literally just swim over to it with no challenge, but at least it's a little creative. And that's it, all of the items. So to recap, on your first pass, there are three boss fights, two of which are pushovers, only two platforming challenge rooms, a major ability that I wish was unlocked sooner, one charm, maybe two if you're generous and want to count boulder shell, and one combat trial against a single enemy. Like, even Crossroads had three. On your second journey through later on in the game, you get one pushover boss and one samey platforming challenge, as well as one charm and a nail art. In the entire biome, there are zero shops, two charms, two NPCs, only one of which has a story because the nail smith is dead on your save and you know it, two sub areas, and 14 filler rooms. In the fungal waste, the literal very next biome, you have a shop with three charms, three more charms that you can find hidden throughout the area, an absolute fan favorite boss fight along with a dream warrior, two NPCs just like Green Path, three sub areas counter to Green Path's two, six platforming challenges and one combat challenge, remember Green Path was three in one, and while it has long stretches without meaningful pickups, it makes up for it with a recurring platforming gimmick, and every side room does have a pickup, unlike this crap in Green Path. Okay, this is a really important one. Problem number three, the citizens of Green Path haven't subscribed. This makes their lives a lot worse, and that negative mind that can spread to you too unless you smash subscribe right now. Silk Song is literally incapable of releasing until I reach 2,000 subscribers. True story. Uh, okay, moving on. Problem number four, identity. Tell me, what makes Green Path stand out? Forgotten Crossroads has stalactites and gets infected. Fungal Waste has bouncy mushrooms. Fog Canyon has exploding jellyfish. Deep Nest has... Every single area has something, except Howling Cliffs, but that's fine because it has atmosphere and gore. Even Green Path has a gimmick, but it's these falling platforms that add literally nothing to platform ever. If they were reversible, you might be able to make interesting puzzles about lifting them up and then smashing them back down to transport a physics prop or something, or use it as a genuine weapon rather than a one-time use instant kill, but nope, they're basically glorified levers that open gates. Not really any creative uses with this thing, and while I will admit that Crystal Peaks and Queen's Gardens do have the exact same gimmick, at least it's a good good gimmick that can actually be used to make interesting challenges. Not every area needs an interesting gimmick. The Waterways, City of Tears, and the Hive all have pretty dull gimmicks, and unless you want to count constant dive floors, Kingdom Edge doesn't really have a gimmick at all, which, I mean, yeah, it's painfully obvious that the Kingdom's Edge was just a grab bag full of random stuff that didn't have an area thrown together, isn't it? Anyways, the elephant in the room, Green Path looks like Queen's Gardens, and uh, that's really all there is to it. There's very little feature overlap and absolutely no difficulty overlap, but Queen's Queen's Gardens and Green Path are both lush green biomes, except one has challenges and difficulty, and the other one has thorns of agony. I will admit, the similarity isn't unprecedented. Forgotten Crossroads and Howling Cliffs look a lot alike, but I think that's a lot more excusable since Cliffs is such a minor area. Green Path and Gardens are both full areas, with story beats and multiple boss fights each. Green Path is bigger, but my way of judging what makes a biome better is content density, which Gardens easily wins by. Only half a charm and a love key, but a bunch of platforming challenges and some of the most difficult basic enemies in 
in the game and the worst boss in the game but let's forget about that part in conclusion green path is kind of just boring it lacks identity and interesting pickups and has almost no difficulty in its extra challenges metroidvanias are platformers at the end of the day and if they don't have interesting ways to use that even if it's for one of the first areas they aren't doing a good job now hollow knight is still one of my favorite games of all time and almost every single area is really cool despite generally not having enough platforming challenges for my taste this is just one small hiccup in an honestly near perfect game for me i sincerely wish that team cherry had made this area spread infection too maybe after unlocking either half of the white fragment but it's too late for that on the bright side silk song looks to be doing a great job so far not letting something like this repeat now wait before you click off the video if you like my content a lot i just want to let you know that you can now officially support the channel thank you to nate the maker gd sparky 64 and philip pesek for joining already by joining you get access to occasional members only videos and community posts including one video that will be going live in just a few days as well as early access to a small selection of videos like my daily silk song news application and a few others from time to time i don't want to be one of those channels that locks so much behind memberships that it takes away from the free viewers experience because i do really appreciate all of you even if you can't support the channel monetarily but to those of you interested in just a little more please consider it with that being said a lot of you voted for the video on invincibility dashes so i think i'll probably make that one next but no promises the amount of videos i've canceled even after getting pretty far into development is obscene you don't want to know actually that gives me a really good idea for some bonus content to give members videos that never saw the light of day interesting idea maybe maybe get out of here